Morgan Thaler here with Equipment Zone. I've got Roy Huseman, our technician. And behind the scenes, we have Jay Bissell. We're so grateful he's back here managing things, making sure the audio and the video is great. Also, he will be checking uh, for your questions. So uh, if you have questions, make sure you put them in the Q&A section of this webinar. If you have a comment like, hey, your audio just went out or your video sucks, then put it in the chat. But if you have a question about what we're doing or how we're doing it, put it in the Q&A. So today we're gonna to be talking about hoodies. Again, this is part two. The first one we did, we talked about printing on hoodies without zippers. And then we promised you we'd come back and show you printing on hoodies with a zipper. And yes, very possible, works great on the Epson F2100. So that's what we're featuring today, the Epson F2100 Director Garment Printer. We are also using the great Speed Treater TX made by Equipment Zone in New Jersey. We're also using the Geonite DK20A 16 by 20 heat press. So for platens, the big difference that we're gonna be uh, doing is that we have a platen with risers on it, okay? So we'll talk more about this during the webinar, all right? Jay's telling me to get a little closer. There's a little bit of a shine. I think you can see these risers are applied to this platen. Now this is a Livingston Systems tuck lock platen and these risers, Roy, if you could just pick one up and, and show people how that just, just gets inserted right pins. on there. Just goes right in there. So this is the platen we'll be featuring today. There's also a platen from Epson that you can use. It's specifically for hoodies and it doesn't have pieces that you can take off or put on. With this 16 by 20 Livingston system tuck lock platen, you can have those risers on or take them off. Um, you can also purchase a 14 by 16 as well that has risers for the zipper hoodies. Great, thank you, Roy. So um, you're probably wondering why are we talking about hoodies? Uh, today, I think in Arizona, it's gonna hit what, 108, 110 degrees? <laughs> so we're super excited about that. Definitely not hoodie weather. Um, but this is the time to start thinking about the fall. We're always thinking a few steps ahead, right? You wanna be prepared. You don't wanna be playing catch up. So that's what we're doing today. We're being prepared, we're preparing you, we're teaching you to be prepared for the fall when hoodies become more important. So um, I'm gonna turn the time over to Roy and he's gonna show you how to do this. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, Jeff. Anyway, um, this is part two from uh, the last one that we did. And as we showed you the risers, uh, there's two different sizes you can purchase. Um, it actually narrows the gap here. Uh, obviously on the tail end, you can see where, well, I'm gonna move the camera a little closer. You can see here that you have an open area for hoodies that have pockets like the ones we have here. Okay, so I'm gonna go through uh, how to properly pre-treat a hoodie first off. So basically you wanna make sure if there's any lint or anything, you wanna get it off beforehand. So go ahead and use your lint brush at this time. Hoodies tend to have a lot more lint than other products. You wanna make sure you got your strings out of the way. You pull your hoodie all the way to the front of your uh, pre-treater and you're gonna tuck this in. Make sure this is completely flat. Tucking in the sleeves. The other thing you wanna do is make sure that your zipper is laying, or the uh, fabric over the zipper is laying completely flat in the area you're gonna be printing. If it's popping up at all, then what happens is, is you're not gonna get the ample amount of pre-treat in the seam where that uh, threading is between the zipper and where it uh, comes over, okay? So you wanna make sure that's completely flat. And go ahead and push it in. On our pre-treater, we're doing this at a number six for this specific hoodie. And we're gonna go ahead and pre-treat that. Now I have some already cured, uh, ready to print. 
and we'll show you how to mount those. So I want to make sure I have ample amount of pre-treat on the hoodie. Uh, different hoodies may require more or less, depending on the thickness. Uh, and at this point, this hoodie is good to go. As you can see, it's completely pre-treated. When I get over to the heat press, I'm going to thread it. So I'll go ahead and uh, move the camera there. So I'm going to thread the hoodie. Now it would be best on hoodies because you're putting so much pre-treat on them is to pre-treat them in, in advance and let them sit for a little while so you can let that uh, pre-treat soak in. You want to make sure that you're pulling your zipper completely forward so you don't have an issue with that laying flat. Now, I don't want to really disturb the pre-treat over the zipper area, but I want to make sure that this material is going to be folding over and when I press it, it's going to lay flat. So what I want to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and put my parchment paper on here and I'm going to push over that seam to make sure it's flattened out because it's wet and go ahead and flip it. And then I'm going to give that a 90 second cure time. Now 90 seconds may not be enough for the hoodie. So you want to just check them after the fact and then go ahead and uh, uh, add some more time if you need to. Or like I said, uh, go ahead and advance, go ahead and pre-treat them and uh, let them start drying before you actually press them. So as we uh, let this thing go, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, proceed to how to mount the hoodie on the DTG. So we're, again, we're going to thread it. The other thing to keep in mind with the risers, I did remove the black spacer out of here. So keep that in mind. And that is removed from here. We've got two spacers, a white one and a black one. And this specific hoodie, we're looking at a, a platen height of three that we're gonna start with when we get this thing mounted. So after pre-treating, curing, you want to make sure you're not uh, throwing your hoodies anywhere where they're going to collect any lint because you definitely don't want to lint roll it after it's been pressed. And again, on the zipper, you want to make sure that it's all the way over the front edge and that everything on here is completely flat. So when you do print across the zipper there, that you're gonna get a nice print, okay? That my pocket falls behind my risers. So I'm gonna just straighten this out, tuck this in in the front, get that zipper going. Then I wanna just smooth it out and make sure that I'm completely flat down the sides, tucking my sleeves in. And then I'm gonna stretch my zipper to make sure all this is laying flat and tuck that in. Now your pockets may flap open here. If this becomes an issue, you can go ahead and put some uh, painter's tape over it. As long as when you're looking across it that the uh, risers are sitting higher than everything, you're gonna be fine, okay? So you can just tuck that in just to make sure. And let's go ahead and make sure that our flatten height is where we need it to be. So we're gonna go ahead and hit our button here. Okay, so I have an error. I'm gonna just double check and make sure that my zipper is actually sticking up right now.
See, I'm not what I think I did was I pulled it a little too far on the left to right side. And it's just focusing on flattening that out there. Double check that now. Okay, we're good to go. Now, as far as setting up Garment Creator to do a print, you're gonna do it just like you're printing on a shirt. The only difference is is that you want to go ahead and make sure that you're printing in unidirectional mode okay and as far as the amount of white base you might have to increase that uh, so you get a consistent lay down of white ink um, i'm using a number of 50 on my white base okay i'm going to go ahead and uh, print that and send that over there's no special jig or template needed for this platen. You're just using the standard 1620. Hey, Roy. Yes. Got uh, a couple of questions that you can answer while that's printing. Okay. So um, one is about how much uh, pre-treat are you putting down? What's that cost on that, you think? Um, on the six, I would say you're probably approaching 35 to 45 cents, depending on the the, um, the hoodie and how okay. much pre-treat it's gonna take. Um, if you're not sure how much you wanna put, you can obviously use a parchment sheet and uh, or uh, reduce the amount of space that you're pre-treating and go ahead and pre-treat in a couple different settings to kind of get the sweet spot for you as far as pre-treat goes uh, to minimize putting too much down and spending too much money there. But you definitely want to make sure because the weave is a lot um, uh, thicker or more open, you're going to require more free treat on this. So a good lay down again. Perfect. Thank you, Roy. And just to be clear, so when we pre-treat a t-shirt with the pre-treater, the speed treater, we're normally set at about five. So on this, mm -hmm. you're turning it up to six to put down a little bit more. That's correct. Okay, great. Um, another question that we have from Mike is, um, are there risers for the standard Epson 14 by 16 platen? And Epson if, doesn't sell risers. Okay. So, so basically no it's a specialized platen from Epson that is just used for that function. With the Livingston, the tuck locks, the 1416 and the 1620, you can use them as standard platens. They also sell pocket risers, which are just small little square pieces to lift your pockets up as well. So you're not just limited to using it for zippered hoodies. Perfect, thank you. So if I had an Epson 14 by 16 platen, is there a workaround? I've heard uh, that you might be able to use a mouse pad. Yes, you can use a mouse pad, but you would have to use two of them and make sure that they're positioned similar to these risers. That may require cutting them. Uh, and depending on the size of the sweatshirt as well, you may need to use more than two. You may need to use four. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Uh, what pressure are uh, are you are you set at on the heat press? The heat press. I'm giving it uh, number three on the pressure gauge on this uh, hoodie. I normally do a one to a two on a t-shirt, but on the hoodie, I'm adding a little bit more because I want to make sure my zipper zippered area. This one's been pressed is com completely flat and not gonna be opening up when I go through the print process, as you can see. So from right the there. medium pressure, you'd say? Uh, it's probably about medium, I would yeah, say. Medium, okay. Yeah, three is about medium. Perfect. Uh, as you start getting up to four to five to six, that's more in the firm range on pressure. We have a great question from Scott asking, why print unidirectional? unidirectional? Okay, well basically with uh, bi-directional printing, which is twice as fast, when the print head's moving, the ink droplets are coming down and it's really gravity, but it's almost like rain. So as that head's uh, streaming across, the ink's dropping down at an angle. Then when it goes the other way, it drops down at an angle. So you have to be at a perfect plane on where your print surface is. So if you have any consistencies with zippers 
even doing caps, shoes, anything that's not completely flat, uh, printing over uh, seams as we are really doing with the zipper, um, it's not completely even the surface. So I want to make sure that I have a good focus when I uh, lay down my ink. And if you're laying down the ink in one direction, it's a lot easier to, to print on something that's not completely flat and still get a good image. As long as you're pretty much within range of the um, Sorry. Give us a close up. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and uh, let you look at this hoodie here. So, wow, that looks amazing. And that was easy. Yep. So, so what taking uh, it off yeah, is a little tricky. This is actually a medium hoodie. So I'll come around here. So it's fitting on the 1620 flat and a little tight. But I'm going to pull my back end out first. Okay, and start walking it forward. Then I pull my sides and then just grab it by the sleeves. And there we go. Okay. Now, when you press that, Roy, you would do that one at a lighter pressure than what you did for the heat for the pre treat? Um, well, basically what I want to do when I press this is I want to use ample pressure. So depending on how much ink you're putting on the sweatshirt, if the weave is uh, spread out, I want to add more ink. The more ink I add, the more I want to let this uh, set, okay? So at this point, I would actually be printing some hoodies and let them sit out on the table for a minute or two to allow that ink to start setting up because if you put too much pressure on it immediately, what could happen is the white could come through and bubble through the, the blue and the red, which I don't want to have happen. So it's really better to let it sit for a few minutes before I go to press it, or I could bring it over to my heat press and do a hover before I actually uh, do it, the actual pressing on it. Now I would run over there and help you, but this is fun watching you handle it by yourself. Okay, so. <laughs> I hey, can go uh, ahead and hover it right now before I actually going to thread it to press it because I still am going to thread it to press it. Now I did get ample ink as well, enough to actually shoot a little line through the zipper. If you want to look down here on the platen, you can see a little white line of ink right there, a little residual. So you want to make sure you wipe that off so you're not getting it on to the next garment. We had a question from uh, John about what brand of hoodies we're using today. And I, I know that we're using Cotton Heritage, which um, we're big fans of Cotton Heritage. We also um, use uh, All We Do, AWD, that you can find on our website. Uh -huh. Both print fantastic. So um, uh -huh. those are the, the brands that we're using. Another question, um, let's see. The longevity of the prints are very good. Um, obviously, it's going to be a little thicker, as most hoodies do have, but we printed way all the way to the edge, where right where that zipper's out. So, okay, uh, nice image. So, um, what, another question we just had is: is the the surface that you're printing on the outside of the hoodie is that 100% cotton? On this specific one, yes, it is. Okay. Okay. It's. Uh, let me see what the brand is on this hoodie. But we printed on some that aren't 100 percent the solar gray. Yeah, some uh, 80 20s I've used. In fact, this particular hoodie is an 80 20 right here. So they don't have to all be 100 percent cotton, uh, but this one is a. Get my glasses out here. Sorry about that. Uh, 6535, and then the uh, face is 100 uh, percent cotton. Okay, perfect. Now, um, let's just cover that timing again on the heat press. How long was that for? Uh, 90 seconds. I just hovered it this time. Uh, so I'm not really ready to press that yet. I can let it sit for a minute longer. Or like I said, if you got hoodies, it does take longer to print hoodies. But there's more margin in hoodies as well, as we know. So at this point, I could go ahead and thread it. By the time I get that done, or I could have been uh, curing another 
uh, garment as well. Okay, while you're doing that, I have a question from Kevin. Should we pause after laying down the white to give the white a chance to start setting prior to putting the color on it? Uh, you can do that, but as you increase your levels on the white base, it does two things. It's not really like the color at all. Um, it actually stabilizes or even out or evens out how the white is put down. So if you have areas like if you're printing at your normal setting, where if you look sideways at the shirt, when it does pop out, where there's a little bit of ink that's, that's wet looking or it's shiny, that means it's definitely wet still. If it's matte, a matte finish all the way across, um, then that is a thinner amount of ink and it is setting up properly. And then keep in mind, these sweatshirts are very thick so they are gonna absorb the moisture or the water content from the ink faster than a, a t-shirt will. So they should set up just about the same as a shirt as far as uh, that goes in taking the second pass of ink. You don't wanna add time unnecessarily, but when you go up from uh, zero, which is normal, to 25% or to 50 or to 75 or 100, each time you go up, it's adding a little bit more ink, but it actually smooths out how the ink is distributed. Because if you've ever looked at your white base um, with just the normal setting, it looks almost like a grayscale image of what you're going to print. As you continue to go up from 25 to 50 to 75 or 100, it actually starts closing that in and smoothing it out to where at 100, you have a 100% solid white base, but it's not as much ink as you would think. So the cost doesn't go up that much on a typical design like the one we just printed. It may go up uh, five to 10 cents on 100% versus the 25 is actually within a penny uh, plus or minus of not changing it at all. Because all it does is take some of the heavy areas and redistribute that ink to the light area. Hopefully I answered that. I'm sorry, that. I didn't catch that. Could you repeat that? Yeah. Just <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Right. right? Uh, that, that just shows you everybody how lucky we are to have Roy. He knows more about this than uh, anybody I've met. So really, we're really lucky to have him doing this. Um, okay, another question. Um, it is in the other window. Here we go. When curing, should we use a heat pillow because of the zipper? No. No, pillows typically are only used for dye sublimation to keep uh, the paper scarring or the picture framing that never goes away from paper and doing transfers with dye sub. So okay. I would never use pillows on any type of DPG. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll just put a plug in for dye sublimation real quick while we're wrapping this up. Uh, Roy is an expert in dye sub. <laughs> we also sell that. So. You're welcome, Kevin. Um, all right, do we have any other questions? Man, did we just nail it all in about 25 minutes? We're really good, aren't we? All right. All I right. want to thank you guys for your time today. Jeff is running on over here. I was behind uh, the computer, not yeah. in front of the camera. That's right. Hey, thanks, everybody. Uh, feel free to give us a call. You can email me, jeff.m at equipmentzone.com. You can also email support at equipmentzone.com if you if you have a question for Roy, and stay tuned for future or any webinars. of our other texts. Yeah, or any of our it's other not texts. just me because I don't have <laughs> enough time for everyone. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Thanks, Roy. All, all right. right, everybody. Have Thank a great you. day. Have a good one. Be safe.